Hello friends, thank you so much for joining me for another video tutorial. I'm Lisa Taggart, a mixed media artist from Northern Ireland. I've been working with Lavinia Stamps for many years and I'm absolutely delighted to be asked to contribute to this wonderful spring event. I'm calling this tutorial By the River and I suppose it's really a demonstration on how versatile the Distress Oxide inks are in the creation of magical backgrounds. This video will be a little unusual for me in that there'll be no music this time. However, I'm going to provide a commentary and a little bit more explanation on the processes and so forth. If anyone would like, after watching this video here, to have the version with just music, I'll do my best to upload load this on to my YouTube channel in the next day or two, so you can have the best of both worlds. You'll find the links below. So, without further ado, let's make a start and first of all, look at some of the materials used in today's project. Today we're mainly using Distress Oxide ink pads, Wild Honey, Spiced marmalade, abandoned coral, aged mahogany, and vintage photo. And these are the sky colours. Evergreen brow, prize ribbon, peeled paint, and forest moss. And these are the foreground colours. For stamping, we're using nocturne, fallen leaves, chianti, and golden meadow. We have the pencil and the dark fine liner and also the white gel pen and the Stabilo all black pencil. We've got some pastel pencils, we've got some ochre colours, some yellows, some blues and a turquoise. And these are from the lovely Van Gogh set of pastel pencils. I'm also using some water based markers. These are the clean color zig ones. We've got um, yellows, uh, a pink and a grey brown. I'm also using Posca pens in blue, yellow, pink, orange and red. And the corresponding colours in the sparkle pens, and this is optional, you can just use glitter, but I've got the, the gold and the rest of the colours, which is handy. In terms of tools, we're using a ruler and a circle template. We've also got some um, masking fluid and the brush for that. I'll be using my lovely um, stencil brushes and a smoothie. And some applicators, these are again are optional, use whatever you have. Got a water brush and some tissue for bleaching out some of the colours. And of course my diamond stickles for some twinkle. And finally then we've got the watercolour card which is from Lavinia Stamps and I really enjoy using this. Next up then we have the fabulous stamps and a lovely selection today. We have the tree stem first of all and also the tree den. We have a little stamp from the silhouette set. We've got red pine large and small. The lovely Heidi and Howard which are new. Bluebells, another little foliage one from the set and from the flora set as well. These are so handy, the little, little stamps. So if you want to see how this was made from the stamps, just keep on watching. So for our background, we're using the watercolour card from Lavinia Stamps. It's beautifully smooth and great for stamping. I've cut it down now and it's six and a half by eight and a half inches or 22 by 17 centimetres. And what I've done is I've uh, measured um, about 10 centimetres or four inches up from the bottom and I've drawn a line. I've also marked a couple of little spaces just past the centre line and that's for the, the end of the river. That's the horizon. I also created another little dot to the left hand side about one and a half inches up and what I'm going to do is join those two uh, marks together and I'm taking then my circle, the edge of my circle template and I'm just going to score around that and that gives me a rough idea of the uh, river shape and then I just customise it and change it slightly and make it a bit more organic. So that's the first thing. 
Then I'm taking the cir circle template again and, and to the left hand side, not the center, I'm drawing a circle for the sun. And that is the composition then sorted out. I've got the masking fluid now and I'm going to uh, fill in the sun. And this is very easy just to paint on with the paintbrush and you just treat it like paint and obviously allow it to dry before you ink over the top. I'm also, while I have the opportunity, taking the brush and whatever excess I have to mark a few little dots here and there on the river. Why not? And so that will give us our little white spaces when that's taken off. Um, so that's about it. And I think now that that's dry, we're ready to take our inks. And we're starting off with the yellows, the, uh, the wild honey, first of all. And I'm just going to blend this in a circle around the masked sun and I'm going to fill the whole of the upper space above the horizon line with the yellow of the uh, wild honey and I'm leaving a little bit of white around the sun as well. Next I'm taking the slightly darker spiced marmalade orange colour and I'm going to repeat that process and leaving yellow around the sun and starting um, in a bit um, I'm going to fill the space again this time blending the orange in and you'll notice as well uh, I'll be uh, taking off some of the ink from my brush onto the craft mat before I place my brush onto the paper. I'm going to repeat the process then with the slightly darker aged mahogany, again taking it slightly further out away from the sun uh, in circular motions around that area and filling the whole space up to the edge and down to the horizon line. You can see it's starting to mix together nicely and create that um, ombre effect. Now I'm taking my spiced marmalade again and I'm going around the edges so it's not quite so stark with the darker colour and blending in the orange into that again and I'm also taking the yellow and doing the same blending in the lines uh, towards the centre and making them a little bit tidier and more blended and this is like a dance going back and forward and taking the colours, the darks and the lights and blending them together to build up the ombre. I'm also using a, a little bit of this colour just to brighten it and I'm just taking a, a circle of it, I suppose, uh, towards the middle. Um, almost like a sunset colour. I just thought that would perk it up a, a little bit and I love this colour, Abandoned Coral. It's fabulous for skies and it goes really well with yellow. So I'm just adding a circle of that there. And then finally I've got my vintage photo and I'm going to go round the edges with that and blend that in mainly towards the top and the sides but a little bit around the bottom as well. And it's only really when you see the darker colour uh, at the end, uh, do you get the full effect of the ombre? And um, it really is very interesting how um, each colour influences the other. Next up is the foreground and we're going to start with the river. And I'm adding the yellow, the honey colour again, because obviously this is where the sun would be shining on the river. And I'm using this wonderful colour, Evergreen Bow, next. And this is a great bluey green colour. And of course, um, water is blue. Yes, we know that. But water will uh, change colour according to what is um, reflected on it. And if we have the yellow of the sun added into the uh, river, the blue, then it, it turns a slightly aqua greeny colour. So that's why I'm using this colour and I'm taking my applicator and adding a little more texture to it. 
which is a great a great way to use the oxides. Uh, so combining the brush and the applicator, you get a, a heavier effect. And now I'm taking the blue and blending that into the bottom. And I'm keeping the bottom of the picture dark because uh, the closest you are, the, the darker the colours are. And leaving then the, the top of the river to be uh, the lighter, paler, reflected part. And as with the uh, sky part, um, I blend in the lighter colours again at the end and go back and forth until I'm happy with the blend. OK, so now that that's done, I'm taking the wild honey colour again with the applicator this time. And in the same way as I did before with the green, I'm adding in again the yellow, a heavier yellow there at the top. And I'll be using this same technique later on uh, at the river bank. And for the river bank, we're starting with pale paint. Now it's very similar to the mix you get using the other colours and technically you don't have to use this. You could just mi mix the evergreen by and the, uh, the blue. But I do think it's a bit perkier, this, um, this colour. I love this colour, uh, green, and it mixes beautifully with the forest moss as well. And what I'm aiming to do here is darken the sides of the riverbank and going up a little further into the sky as well. I think it's important to draw your eye in uh, by darkening some parts of the, of the picture and keeping the the light area around the uh, corners of the riverbank and to further darken up the edges I'm using the same blues in the river and um, blending them in with my finger because uh, sometimes your finger is best <laughs> what can I say I use my fingers a lot so that's basically the background and now I'm going to create a little more perspe perspective by adding a mountain now, I'm going back to one of my colours in the sky, the aged mahogany colour, which is really a lovely colour. And very lightly, I'm going to use my smoothie and my acetate hill mask. And I'm going to blot in some colour, as I say, very lightly because the sun will be shining on this distant mountain. And we don't want it to be too strong, particularly just underneath the sun. And it's just enough there to add the hint of a background in the far distance. Now I'm measuring the uh, stamp at the foreground because I want one of the logs to go across the river and I'm inking that up uh, in the brown colour. I'm not using very much black in this picture. I want to keep the colours subdued to a certain extent and I'm not too bothered about it not going the whole way across because you can use the other end to match it up and a fine line black marker or a pencil um, to add in the detail in the middle later on. So I'm also taking the uh, skinnier tree, the tree stem, and adding that underneath and uh, hope, hoping that it stamps okay and yes it does. And then I'm going to create uh, some more dimension, I guess, by using a combination of the different sizes of the tree stems um, and also different colours for stamping. So the colour I'm using at the minute, I think, is the brown. So those would be uh, closer to you when they're stamped. The, the darker, the more closer. And that's the larger treed in in place and I don't mind um, stamping the stems in in slightly different directions because in you'll notice in nature trees aren't always straight up in the air some go a bit skew with here and there and I like this um, this effect when they're going slightly different directions I'm also now using the uh, Chianti colour and that is to create some distance. They're not quite so dark, so they'll be back in the distance. 
and as I say, it's a combination of using colour and size of stamp to create perspective. Next up is a fun part, um, it's the water brush and what I'm doing is I'm just um, putting in some water there to uh, remove some of the oxide ink. Now it'll not all come out but enough of it can be bleached out um, to give us a paler effect. As you can see there I'm using some kitchen towel and going back and forth with my water uh, trying to be careful not to go over the edges. Uh, I'm a bit impatient and sometimes I do but um, you can see there I've lifted enough of the ink and because we've stamped with uh, a Versafine Claire and I've done the rest there as well um, the stamping remains in place. Now I'm using an eraser to uh, rub away the um, masking fluid. You can use your finger, but because I have a pencil line there, I'm just using the eraser just to get rid of all of that. You can see how nice and bright it is now. So what's left on the brush, I uh, haven't added any extra ink. I'm just putting in some yellow uh, around the edge, but still leaving a little bit of white. I don't want it too harsh in the centre, but just enough to give it a glow. So there you are. So the bleach trees and uh, I'm taking now the um, lovely red pine uh, stumps and I'm just building up the forest in the same way as I did with the stems. Um, and I'm using these. These are delightful and they, they combine so beautifully with the stems because I'm not intending to use any leaves in, in this picture. And uh, this is a great way of helping your perspective uh, as well by using a stamp like this because you'll see in a minute or two that you can you can cut them off and make them look like smaller trees and that's very very useful when you want uh, some trees to look smaller and, and further away. Okay I'm taking a well-loved piece of copy paper and the Golden Meadow ink pad which is uh, a greeny yellow tone which is a, a very um, useful colour to have when building a forest scene and as you can see there using the masking of the bottom of the stamp I've made it into a smaller far, farther away tree and uh, building them up higher and larger as they come forward in the picture and I'm doing the same thing again that I did with the other trees in that I'm using paler ink uh, for distance and as I come closer I'll use either the red ink or the brown ink to uh, create the perspective that I'm looking for. You can see too that sometimes I mix my inks, which isn't always a good idea when you see the state of the ink pads. Um, but sometimes I just want to tone down a colour or add a different colour in the centre. And it's always fun to mix, as I say. So we'll just keep building it up, um, basically putting them where I think they'll look good and trying to uh, bear in mind that you want to draw uh, the eye into the centre and you're kind of inviting the viewer to look that direction by your use of, of where you place the trees and um, it's a lot of fun uh, just seeing what looks good here and there and I've really no idea most of the time when I start out how, how it's going to look and just stamp and hope for the best. <laughs> I 
was just showing you the colours there that I used and I think that'll do just a quick tidy up and also very important to dry off your layers in between. Now the colouring, I'm not going to do too much with the trees, um, it's really just to add a touch of colour and the good thing about these markers and you can use any colour, sorry any water based markers that you have, these uh, are very well worn I suppose and they're not too um, juicy. Uh, sometimes if you have a marker that's uh, too juicy then you, your paper will start to pill but what I'm doing is I'm adding the mid-tone it's like an ochre colour and just uh, adding that towards the middle and to one side and I'm taking into account the direction of the sunlight so you can see there that I have a yellow which I'm adding to the right hand, sorry, left hand side and that's where uh, the sun would hit that tree and similarly with the others. And this uh, is also very relaxing and therapeutic. If It's basically colouring in and um, just bearing in mind the direction of the light and taking uh, your colours accordingly. Now you can see I'm taking the, it's like a grey brown colour and adding that uh, to the farthest away part of the tree, the part that doesn't get much light. And now this is like a, a pinky, um, orangey tone and this is just for warmth because uh, of the colours in the sky. And you always like to consider the ambient light in a picture and how the light is affecting the, the, the other colours in the scene. And the logs at the front will get a similar treatment. Uh, they'll have light at the top where the sun is hitting them. They'll have the mid-tone in the centre and then a darker tone at the bottom. And there we have the orange tone as well. Now, don't worry if you lose some of your line work. The line work is important, but it all always can be added later uh, over the top of the colouring. And that's what I'm doing now, just uh, highlighting the parts that I feel are important to the composition and making sure that I bring them back to life. And I quite often do this, so I don't worry if I lose parts of the stamping. I always bring them back. And you can see there, um, they've been gone over. Now, the next thing is um, I'm adding some more depth, I think, to the side. Yeah, I just felt that it now would be a good time, uh, so I can see where we're at, to uh, colour in the sides and uh, draw the eye into the centre. And I'm using the same colours as before, pretty much, and making sure that I... I keep the yellow to the sides of the river bank and also the, the, the very top of the river. And I'm doing all this and making sure all these things are in place before I stamp in the beavers um, because I can't do this around them. So I tend to do an awful lot of preparation in the background before I do my focal stamping. And I just dotted on there some a colour to look like flowers at the side of the riverbank. And I've taken off the gum and I'm now using uh, soft pastel pencils to enhance the colours of the water. And this is always a, a very good way of um, drawing out the colours if you've, if you've lost them in the mix. Um, I love to layer in my work and... Um, the Distress Oxide ink, uh, when, once it's dry, and make sure it's dry before you do this, uh, if you then can layer pastel on top, it, it blends beautifully on top of uh, Distress Oxide. So that's what I'm doing. I'm adding back um, some texture into the water. Uh, very important to have that aqua greeny blue colour in the centre and yellow towards the top. And now that I've got my my white from uh, the masked parts, I can uh, fiddle about with those as well and make them look like uh, uh, foam in the water, hopefully. I'm also taking a, a darker blue towards the bottom and blended all of that out. Next then we have our little stamps, our, our foliage stamps and 
I'm just going to stamp these very randomly along the, the river bank, mainly in the red colour, uh, the Chianti colour and also the brown. And I'm not really too particular about this. Uh, the reason I'm using these little stamps is really to give me a bit of a, a sort of texture to the riverbank and somewhere uh, to put my uh, paint pen, my Posca pen later. So all the little dots and all the little flowers all randomly stamped and placed um, can be used then to highlight later on. And it just gives you an idea of where to build up the colour. So you don't have to be too particular, but these little stamps are so useful for for these types of backgrounds. Now this is a gorgeous one as well, and this is a bit taller, so um, it it we, we're putting this towards the front of the picture, and um, this will work well. And then next, I think I'm going to use the bluebell, yes. And the bluebell is a little larger again, so I'm keeping the larger ones for the front of the picture and the tiny ones towards the middle and the very end of the, the river bank. And don't worry that these are uh, being lost in the background because they're fairly dark. The idea, as I say, is to use their shape to add some colour later on. And now for the stars of the show and we have our nocturne and our wonderful beaver stamps. I'm giving them a good inking up and making sure rubbing off uh, some of the pastel with my finger to make sure the surface is nice and uh, free of dust so that I can stamp them perfectly on top of the log. Give them a good squeeze and a good push and there we are. That's the first one. Doing the same again then on the other side with my finger just making it smooth and inking up well using the Nocturne. And there we are. I didn't think you would want to watch me putting dots on all the plants so I'm going to talk you through what I did. I've added some uh, yellow Posca pen onto the little log um, parts and I've taken a Stabilo all black pencil and added a shadow underneath the little beavers. You can see there it makes all the difference. And I'll talk you through the rest. Uh, I've taken the red Posca pen and the red sparkle pen and added it to the uh, bluebells at the front. And there they are twinkling. I've done the same for the blue and added uh, the blue sparkle on top of the, the paint pen. The same again for the orange, which I've done in the, in the middle for the medium size uh, flowers. And then I've added dots of yellow here and there to brighten up the picture. Now I'm taking the gold pen and what I'm about to do is do what I love to do towards the end is to highlight parts of it. Um, thinking again of where the sun might hit uh, some aspects of, of the picture and uh, taking uh, some of the little foliage uh, elements and highlighting them in gold sparkle and also the sides of the trees that might be touched by the light. I also like to highlight parts of the uh, focal images that in this case little beavers and again I don't I don't do it uh, very carefully just little tiny bits here and there I don't go uh, over all of their um, surface area and um, finally um, I take my white gel pen and uh, add some extra white highlights to the water, trying to fix it up a little bit, um, make more sense of where the waves are and that kind of thing. And um, this makes a, a difference as well, just to, to whiten up parts that have been covered by the pastel.
Okay, now the fussing is finally over. I have mounted the picture onto black card and this is like a pearlescent cream and then black again. And I'm adding my favourite diamond stickles um, to add some extra sparkle here and there, particularly onto the little beavers where uh, they look a bit twinkly or almost a little bit wet from their exploits and being up to no good on the riverbank. So this is very th therapeutic and it's my final part of the process, I guess. I'm sure you've had a great spring event this year. It's all been very fabulous and I really do hope that uh, you've enjoyed my project today. And it's given you some uh, hints and tips tips of what you can do in your own projects perhaps so um, that's it for this week um, thank you so much for joining me uh, remember that there's more information in the description box below the video links to products and so forth I really do appreciate all, very much all your kind comments that you leave me you're a wonderful bunch so until next time please take very good care of yourselves and I'll see you again